the co outdoors. Today, we're in Thursday's classroom and we are going to be humping it. We're going to learn 10 different techniques to fish in the humps today, as long as, as well as what lives on humps and what, how bass and other fish relate to them. It's going to be a great class today and we're going to learn a lot. So let's get going right to the classroom. Welcome to class today. Today I am going to go over everything you need to know about fishing on a hump. I'm going to teach you 10 techniques to fishing them, which I'm going to, show, I'm going to present them in humps. So let's get to going and see what all we have going on today. Well, the first thing I need to do is teach you what a hump actually is. A hump is, can be imagined as either an underground hill or an underwater island. What it does is it comes up and makes a shallow spot and leaves deep water on all sides. On a hump, you're going to find bass, walleye, muskie, perch, and pike, and many other types of fish. So what you're going to do is, you know, you need, if you need to be able to find any of these fish, if you can find the hump structure, you're more than likely going to find the whole entire food chain right there on the hump, allowing you a great place to catch multiple species of fish, and sometimes some of the largest fish that you catch during the day will come off these humps. So let's be able to, to identify a hump. This is a lake, which I have fished a couple times, and let me show you some humps. You see this little spot here where there's five foot here? The right there is a hump. And you got 10 foot of water out here. And if you take a look right here, this is a steep section of the hump. This might be actually pretty good. Another hump in this picture is over here, actually, right here. You have five foot of water surrounded by 10, dropping into 20 feet. And right here, the contour lines are real close, noting that there's a large, quick drop right there, which is an excellent place. If you, as you can see, this is a pretty deep lake. <laughs> so where do I find my topographical maps? You can find topographical maps on Google, but a lot of the lakes are not covered there, and most of them you have to pay per lake. Personally, I, the best place I have found is this is this uh, Sportsman's Collections fishing map guides, and they have usually take a geographical region of a state and break down the lakes within that system and give you topographical maps. <coughs> this is an excellent source, and there's a link to it in the description. Please use that link to help support my channel, because every time you buy it, I get a small Finders for you. So why why should you fish on? <coughs> if you're a bass fisherman, you know that bass will hold on a hump throughout the year. I love to fish on humps for even tip ups. I catch some monster pike on humps. Being able to use that map to find these humps is a key way that I find my fish. And the fish are there for a very simple reason, as I've stated earlier, the, the whole entire food chain is on the hump. And the hump is an ideal drawing place to the largest fish in the lake because they feel safe in the in deeper water and they can come up on these humps, these shallow humps, and they can feed and they can quickly back into their shelter by just turning around and running into the deep water. <coughs> so how do you know which humps to fish and where on the humps to fish? And my first tip is to always look for oddities. Look for anything on a hump that makes them different. Look for humps that are different. If the if there's trees out in the hump underneath the water, that could be an excellent place. Rock, a rocky soil, gravel, or stuff. Anything that makes that hump different than anywhere else. Even a section on a hump may be a little different than the others. And those contrast lines is where the fish are gonna hold. The second thing you need to be paying attention to is the current is the current positions. I know a lot of people sit there and say they fish these on smooth lakes with no current, but there's always current in the lake. Anytime there's a wind blowing, it moves enough surface water to create current, and if you pay attention, your bait fish will move from one side to the other based on where the current is, because it easily feeds them as the as the 
the food comes over. And when you get the little bait fish move from one side to the other, the bigger fish fall to eat those, and bigger fish than those move to eat those. It's amazing how if you follow the bait, you follow the fish. <clears throat> and that being said, don't be scared to pull off the old friend the jig. You'll find me pitching and flipping on it. Actually, sometimes even flipping on it on a, a open water structure with the bold pump out there because it allows me to put the the bait in quietly and puts it on the ground and it's a real quick fishing technique because usually the fish are going to grab it on its way down so we let it hit the ground a couple times and it's jerky a couple times and a lot of times those fish are going to grab that jig and take off and it's a real quick you can kick apart a a top of a hump extremely quickly that way and as you Get to fish more and more humps you're gonna you're gonna find out that you need to get to know your hump get intimate with the hump get down there and date that hump a little bit the first thing i do when i'm on a new hump is i drop a buoy on top of it if it's a large hump i'm gonna put two or three buoys mark the top of it and that makes it makes it so much easier for me to make accurate casts throughout that hump i recommend that you drop buoys on your humps In the summertime, humps can be a hot spot. It seems like fish love to suspend in the deeper water near them, then move on, then migrate during the day on top of them to feed, which we have established here. I mean, I have this one hump I love to fish, which has weed surface weeds on it. I'll take a frog up there, I'll cast a frog out across that surface hump, and slowly move it across it, and I'll get, and I'll catch four or five pound bass there, almost every single cast. <laughs> The first, the, when I love going to the pumps is in the springtime. Once the bass start, start to spawn, I head straight over there because a lot of times on the edges of these humps is where you're going to find a feeding, large feeding female bass. Absolutely excellent place to fish. I, if you never looked for humps in the spring, I highly recommend that you try it once. That being said, you know the humps are going to be fished throughout the year and one thing you need to be able to do it's essential that you learn how to slow roll your spinner baits. That is done by just slowly making a long cast, letting it sink, and then slowly moving it across the surface and back to the boat. Sometimes you can even jig those spinner baits too. If let, the way you do that, you just make a long cast, let them fall straight to the bottom, and you just lift and let them fall, lift and let them fall all the way back to the boat. It's amazing, it might take a while to make a cast, but you will catch a lot of really nice fish when you do that. This technique works best in the winter and early spring. And another thing, don't be scared of bald humps. Balds can be, bald can be beautiful. Sometimes humps with no cover are covered in weeds, weeds and those weeds attract a bunch of bait fish and a lot of other fishermen will overlook these humps just because there's no structure there and they don't even think about looking to catch fish on these humps and these can be hot spots and because these fish aren't as educated they can you can make 10 9 10 casts and catch 10 fish if you catch them during a feeding frenzy and once you find, start finding these fish the next thing you need to do is dial into these fish Okay, so you found them and you know they're on where the gravel meets peat or where gravel meets grass and you know that's where they're at. Okay, so you dialed into the geographical region on the humps. The next thing you need to do is figure out the bay. I, sometimes I'll go slow way down to a big 10 inch worm and slowly crawl it along the bottom and you need to figure out what's going to catch the biggest fish quickest. <laughs> Because there's nothing like going through a hump and having catching one pounders when there's six pounders there, and especially if you're in a tournament, you need to be able to find the bigger fish out of a school of smaller fish. This can make you break it a tournament day for you guys. Just remember, you're looking for the biggest fish possible when you're fishing. And my biggest tip: this is the most important tip. When you first get to a hump, even if you have a depth finder, always use a crankbait first. 
A crankbait is the quickest way to locate fish on that hump, but it also allows you to feel the hump. You can feel if there's a big rock down there. You can find, you can feel if it's grassy. You can run into timber, and you can run into multiple other things that just happen to be on that hump, and you never know what you're going to find until you do that. You don't know your hump unless you crank it. Get to know your hump, and you'll catch more fish. Plus, if you're not using a deep enough crankbait to hit the bottom, you're not using a big enough one. A lot of times, these educated bass on these humps need a little uh, crankbait down far enough that it's hitting the bottom and deflecting. Don't be scared to, to run it into the grass and then yank it loose either, because sometimes that's going to catch your biggest fish. A little momentary twitch is sometimes it's all the difference between a catch and a release. <laughs> I hope, I hope class has been very good for you today, and I hope that you guys have learned something. Please leave me questions in the in the description and tell me what kind. What is your favorite hump? Do you ever fish humps? Can you imagine a hump? I can. I can tell you where every rock is on my hump. Until next time, this is the host of the show, Derek Cole. Thank you for coming to class. I hope you have learned a lot about humps. If you have any questions about humps or any of the techniques I covered today during this class, please ask them in the comments. I will answer them. Plus, I have enjoyed having you here today, and I can't wait to see you next time on Cool Outdoors. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, and thank you for everything. Please subscribe, like, and share my video. Click it over here, you know you want to. Until next time, I'm your host, uh, Cole Outdoors, Derek Cole. Later!